friends and family of Grace Lutheran Church, and happy Wednesday. Today we're talking about the processional hymn, or it's not a processional hymn actually, it's just an opening hymn for the sixth Sunday in Lent, also Palm Sunday, also Passion Sunday. And I said it was a processional hymn, not a processional hymn, because normally we do process into the sanctuary on Palm Sunday. We're not going to be doing that this year, so it's more just a regular old opening hymn for us. However, it is traditionally a processional hymn, so I guess we can call it that. And it is based, I should tell you what it is before I get to the rest of it. I was going to say it's based on all these other readings. It is called All Glory, Laud, and Honor, and it's number 442 in the Lutheran Service Book. And this hymn is based on the triumphal entry readings from the different Gospels, as well as Psalms 24 and 118. You can see those actually printed as the scripture references at the bottom of the page for this hymn. It specifically references uh, John 12 and then the two Psalms. And we will be reading a section of John 12 before we sing this hymn as well, the section that deals with Jesus entering into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And if you look at the other side of the page, you will see that this is a very old hymn. It was written by Theodolf of Orléans. He was the Bishop of Orléans, or Orleans, I suppose, in France for us who don't speak French very well. And um, he wrote this hymn in the ninth century. It's been used since the ninth century in the church, so a very traditional Palm Sunday processional hymn. And it was probably written between the years of 1817 and his death in 1821, while Theodolf was banished to a monastery in Angers, or Andrews, in France. Banished, yes, banished to a monastery for conspiring against King Louis the Pious, which uh, he probably did not do. He said he didn't do it, and we believe him. Uh, but anyway, banished to this monastery, writes this hymn, uh, there's an interesting legend, actually, that goes along with that, that says that while Theodolf was imprisoned there and wrote this hymn, uh, King Louis the Pious was processing by one day and heard uh, Theodolf singing this hymn, and it was he was so moved by it that he ordered for him to be released right on the spot. Again, this is an unfounded legend, probably did not happen, but a good story nonetheless, which a lot of saint stories are. Theodolf's original version would have been written in Latin, and our version is translated by John Mason Neal. No surprise there. He translates a bunch of stuff. We know all about him. And in each, uh, each time through this hymn, we have two lines of refrain followed by two lines of a verse. And our refrain is as follows, All glory, laud, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Now, when they would use this as a processional hymn in medieval times, they would have had a choir probably singing the verses, and everybody else would have joined in on the refrain. Lucky for us, we get to sing all of it together this week, which will be super fun. And then we've got five two-line verses that follow this refrain. The first verse tells us who Jesus is and what he came to do. It addresses him, uh, it does this by addressing Jesus as the, um, the king of Israel, David's royal son, the king and the blessed one who comes in the name of the Lord. And the king of Israel who comes in the name of the Lord is the same uh, wording that's used to praise Jesus in that John reading of the triumphal entry as well. And then verse 2 starts this theme, sort of, that we get through the next couple verses of songs of praise. Verse 2 has songs of praise, praise to Jesus from the angels that all of creation joins in with as well. Verse 3 continues talking about the songs of praise, but goes back to the original triumphal entry story where the, um, the Hebrews, or the pilgrims in our translation, although in the Hebrew version it was uh, the Hebrews, uh, where they are pr uh, praising Jesus with palm branches as well as their voices. And then verse 4 uh, comes into our time and talks about how our praises echo those songs of our ancestors today. Verse 5 then wraps it all up with, up with a prayer that Jesus would accept those prayers and praises uh, that echo the prayers and praises of the angels and the, the saints before us as well. And that's it. Just a short little hymn surrounding the stuff of Palm Sunday. Uh, we'll sing it right away at the beginning of the service because then the rest of the service sort of moves along and talks about the rest of the passion story. 
and we will be in church this Sunday. Uh, so we look forward to either seeing you there or uh, seeing you online with us. I guess we won't see you, but you'll see us. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something today and we'll see you next time. Bye.